Today we get to see two instances that a bystander had a great counter ambush and the clerk, not so much. Hi friends, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. Today's video comes to us, two of them from Houston, Texas. They're, they're good lessons today. Today's video is brought to us by 511. 511 offers some of the most functional, comfortable, flexible, and fashionable gear, no matter your mission, with James Bond features like special pockets, stain resistance with water wicking coatings, and mechanical stretch. Everyone knows 511 gear is great for field use and when you're training on the range, but if you haven't tried the latest 511 jeans, you do not know what you're missing. I love the Defender Flex jeans. Like all their pants, they're purpose-built for comfort and give you the ability to discreetly carry all your tools with extra hidden pockets, including secondary hip pockets that are perfectly sized for spare mags and your other tools. Once you try these jeans, you will have a hard time wearing anything else. Visit your local 511 store today or 511tactical.com. They are a one-stop shop for all your concealed carry clothing and gear needs. Click the link in the description for 20% off regularly priced items from July 19th to the 25th, no codes necessary. To get a free apron, use the code GRILLIN22. In this first one, you're gonna see several guys walk in, at least three come in, there's at least two more staying at the door. Two dudes that came in first, both are gonna pull guns here. You see the one guy walk by, second guy in the white jacket draws a gun as well. And you see that customer kind of just back off, like, hey man, whatever you want. Threatens the employee, hey, open up the till, whatever. One of them with the backpack is gonna go off into the back and start grabbing, uh, you know, smoking products and stuff like that. This is apparently a, you know, a cannabis dispensary. Gonna grab all the money. This is the dude that ends up kind of, you know, threatening people with a gun, whatever. Go into the back and looking for some more stuff. They ran off once they got what they wanted and nobody got hurt. This next one, on the other hand, you see these two guys walk into this general store and they are going to then point firearms at the uh, employees and demand they open the register. Now, I want you to pay attention as they are doing that to the top uh, on the right here. Right here, you're gonna see a pair of feet. Like a, a customer's gonna kind of walk up, see what's going on and nope the heck out of there. Now, what we have here is we have a female employee and the person in the red shirt is a male supervisor who they say, hey, we want you to get into the register. So the supervisor's gonna be like, hey, let's see if I can scan my, you know, this thing to buy, whatever, and see if I can get you into the registers and do that. But unfortunately, he's stressed out because a dude is pointing a gun at him and he's not able to get into the register to get the money to, to pop open as fast as this guy wants. And so he's trying to figure out how to get in there and all that trying to get in there, he gets frustrated and you see the muzzle flash there and he shoots the manager in the leg at that point. And you're gonna see there that this manager is bleeding pretty good out of his leg. And that does get the register open here or it's about to get the register to open. And once it does, they're gonna grab some cash. And when the dude with the gun runs out, the female employee kicks at the other guy. So they only got a few bucks, apparently just a minimal amount of cash. The manager was taken to the hospital for his gunshot wound, and we're gonna think about lessons. Okay, what do you think out of this one? As the bystander, would you step in, or would you fade into the background like these folks did and say, nope, not my circus, not my monkeys? I'm interested to hear from you. Both of these lessons, I wanna talk about bystanders and their impact and what you can do and what you should do. Because now, you got dudes walking in here, at least two of them with guns, and, and I wanna think about the bystander at this point. You notice he sees what's coming, he can see the fact that there's at least one guy with a gun out here. He's got at least four friends with him. So there are at least five attackers in this particular case and maybe a sixth according to what Houston PD has put out here. So listen, if you try anything right now, man, you're gonna be in a bad way. And we do know that the guy in the white jacket is gonna draw a firearm here real quick as well. So being judicious, hey man, it's not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm just gonna sit here and wait my opportunity to do something to better protect myself. Okay, fine. Now you notice right here, they've basically forgotten about him. And so if, if he had a firearm on his person and felt like he could get ahead of these guys, I will tell you this, you better put bullets in those two dudes with guns on them and do so rapidly. And that means getting a gun out in the fight and getting rapid shots on multiple targets. Recognizing that you probably don't have a surreptitious draw here because there are at least three other accomplices. And if you try to draw a gun quietly, there's a good chance one of them is gonna see you. So getting that gun out fast and getting on those guys would have been the thing. There's no saying that he has to though. Again, you can just kind of wait and be like, hey man, they're not looking at me, they're not messing with me. But that's not complete because watch what happens. He is gonna turn and look. So if you choose to get involved here, if you choose to intervene with these guys and stop this robbery, 
Use your turn. Don't wait forever because your turn will eventually go away like this guy's does here. So if he was trying to fiddle fart with his gun and kind of wait, now he's going to end up in a gunfight. And now these guys are all over the store. And I don't know that it would have been the wisest thing for him to try to counter ambush, even if he could. I don't know that he had a gun on him or anything like that. So, so again, be judicious and smart in launching counter ambushes. We see them work all the time on the channel. We see good people protect themselves all the time on the channel. That's great, but just do so at the right time. And instead, he just kind of fades into the background. I'm not a problem. I'm just going to stand here. Nobody's going to mess with me while these guys go and steal what they want. But recognize they are a deadly threat. They are, they're threatening everybody with the guns. Thankfully, they didn't use them and these guys ran off. This next one, of course, comes to a very different place because as these guys come in, very similar scenario. They're going to point a gun at the employees and demand the cash out of the register. I'm sure demand some product as well. And, and again, guy's got his eyes on you, got a gun on you. You can't draw here. You draw from the drop. You're a dead meat. But let's think about the person, the bystander here. They, they never even saw this bystander, I don't think. Now, could that bystander have drawn a firearm and dropped this guy? Yeah, I think that if they were skilled, they certainly could have. You could make that choice. I don't know if this bystander was armed, but if you are, you better have some skill because that's a pretty decent shot. I'm going to guess that's about an eight or nine yard shot. That's probably a, you know, a, a 24 to 28 foot, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the product line there, that, that shelving unit. And so you got to have some skill and a lot of people don't have that much skill. And it's a perfectly acceptable moral choice just to back out of there. It's perfectly acceptable to say, you know what? This is not my problem. I'm going to back away and go out the emergency exit in the back of the store. And, and now that leaves, of course, the employees to deal with the problem. Now, one of the reasons that we say comply fully or resist fully is because of what happened here. So, so again, get into the register. Listen, man, I'm going to get it for you, whatever. Ring a product up. Say it was, they gave you 20 bucks cash, hit the go button and then let them grab it all and deal with your inventory problems later. Because when you don't, then he gets frustrated with what's going on in his world and you end up getting shot. So this guy's trying to comply, but he doesn't comply fast enough for the robber. So even compliance is no guarantee of safety because you can get a robber who gets just angry about things and wants to prove to you that you have to do what, you want, what he wants you to do. And of course, this is a use of deadly force. If this guy's shooting at me or, or somebody that I am working with, whatever, we're not drawing from the drop anymore. We're drawing on gunfire. And, and if somebody is actually firing at you, then I don't think there's anything else that you can do other than get into the fight. Of course, this manager doesn't have that capability, I, I don't think. And he's not armed, and so he just has to deal with getting shot and continue to try to comply. I want you to notice how much blood there is here, and this is one of the big reasons you want to carry your first aid kit on your person for you, for your loved ones, for your coworkers, for something like that. Because when they finally drive these guys off, and I don't think this is a great idea for this employee to come and try to kick at this guy, because of course the guy with the gun could come right back in a big fat hurry. But thankfully those guys ran off and now what? Now you're trying to improvise uh, medical equipment to try to get this guy to the hospital. I would strongly recommend. I don't know that we had enough blood there that, that a tourniquet was really necessary, but having one in your kit means put it on real quick and get to the hospital for good measure and you know, get that, that, the, the gauze on there and all those things and get him to the hospital. That means you need some skill as well as your equipment. Always remember the ASP medical kits. If you buy them uh, on Mountain Man Medical, all the proceeds that come to ASP on those, we give that to charity. Right now we're using a, a really high quality top end uh, charity for first responders and police officers not to take trauma home from their shifts with them. So we'd appreciate it if you'd buy one of those and help us to help cops all around the nation. And these folks here taught us a couple of good lessons on when the best time is to cover our ASP.